All right, so we're in the air once again, flying walk snail. Um, it's a little bit windy today, but not terribly so. See, we're sitting on about uh, eight miles an hour there, about. So I'm actually going to switch over to fly by wire. Fly by wire A. And I'm going to head kind of out into this direction right out here. And go to cruise. cruise. All right, so since the last flight, um, as far as changes, I've bumped the power back up to 1.2 watts to 100 milliwatts. As I might have saw a little bit of improvement with the uh, flickering OSD after I dropped to uh, 700 milliwatts, but it wasn't a drastic difference. So I just went back to 1200 just for the added power. And the biggest change, we've actually switched over to uh, these uh, Rush FPV Cherry antennas. We're actually running that on both sides now. For both antennas, antennas obviously. These are uh, the Rush FPV Cherries that are rebranded for Caddx. They're rebranded. They're uh, produced by Rush FPV, but they're sold under the Caddx name. Same antennas, they even have the little Cherry logo on top. Just like the uh, Rush FPV branded ones. They're uh, 150 millimeters in length, I believe. I'll put a link to them below the video. I actually uh, bought them from Amazon. On uh, Amazon Prime. I was just kind of sidetracked there. The airplane kind of seemed to bank a little bit and incorrect. I guess it's a little bit gustier wind than I realized. Yeah, you can see we're kind of getting knocked around a little bit in the wind right now. But everything looks fine as far as GPS and all that good stuff. Nothing really looks out of place. One thing I'm really noticing flying on a sunny day like this. Well, it's still late in the evening. You kind of see the shadow from the shed there. And the angle of the sun is down close to the horizon. But while the sun is still out right now, as opposed to a kind of dark of day like it was after sunset the last time we flew with the brightness reduced on that last flight um the picture to me definitely looks better with the sharpness drop down to level number two um you got some of the comments it mentioned it may just have been the lower light conditions that made it look better but i definitely see an improvement even in the sunlight like this so as far as what we're going to do today, I don't really know. Um, obviously, we're flying the uh, higher quality antennas. So we want to at least run out here to two miles and make sure we can still attain that two mile benchmark that we've just kind of been playing around with on the previous flights, previous videos. I would kind of be disappointed if we couldn't make it to two miles with better antennas. Um, but so far, we're pretty much locked into that 25 megabit per second bit rate. So everything looks and feels good. I'm noticing a lot of water standing down here, though. Like I said, the last few attempts that I made to fly this were kind of put off by all the rains that we've been getting lately. And you kind of see there's a lot of water standing back there in the field. And pretty much everywhere else, as far as that goes. But... And for that water back there is a little pond that's always back there for duck hunting, I believe. But everything is pretty much flooded and soaked right now. So, so to hit that two mile mark, we actually need to fly out to this next uh, little corner in the woods out here. But I am pretty happy with the uh, efficiency that we picked up since we switched to the two bladed prop. We're cruising under three amps now, between two and a half and three amps, which is pretty good numbers, to be honest. We're holding about a 29 mile an hour airspeed. Well, right at 30. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with those numbers. And even pushing into the headwind right now, we're running right at about 100 million hours per mile. And it's not a direct headwind. You kind of see on the OSD down on the lower corner there. It's a kind of a quartering headwind, I would call it. I see my little red warning border on the uh, video flashing there. 
we're down to about five megabits per second. If I pan the camera over, no, I'm not really seeing too much compression in the video. But um, it is kind of indicating the video is starting to drop out a little bit. Or not drop out, but the quality is starting to drop. And uh, what we may actually do is uh, once we're, well, we have hit two miles now, I'm going to go ahead and climb a bit. And maybe it'll be a little bit smoother away from some of this wind anyway. Get a little bit higher up off the trees so we're not in the, the air rolling over the top of them. At least. I want to climb up to... Shoot for about 350 or so. Just to play it safe. And then we'll level off and... Uh, just kind of cruise out here a little bit and see what it does as far as video performance. You can see the video is back up to 25 megabits per second. I've kind of seen it drop a little bit to 24 a couple of times. But overall it's holding pretty steady right around 25. Um, it is still a little bit rough out here though. Which I prefer it to be a little bit more calm. But I do see that the wind speed has dropped some. Go ahead and climb back up. Climb a little bit more or less. Try to shoot up to about 375 or so. You know, we don't want to really climb too high and break 400. We want to kind of follow the rules. But we're going to kind of hold it right about here. And we're just going to start venturing out this way and see what the video looks like. And of course we've lost telemetry long ago. We're no longer tracking the airplane on the map with Mission Planner. Um... But that's fine. We know the area quite well out here. And uh, should something happen, if I would have control of the airplane, I would kind of maybe try to ditch it in that, that field out here ahead. It would be a little bit easier to recover it later. But if we lost video, we would just let the airplane fly itself home. Kind of looking, there's a nice little bridge down there. So now we're going to kind of head out for this field. So we just broke three miles. Everything still feels fine. And given from what I've seen from the performance of the uh, Walk Snail system, especially with a good set of antennas like I have on it right now, I believe that I'm not going to find its limits or anywhere near, near them at least anytime soon. Shadows kind of look weird back there. I guess that's the shadow of the wing or something. But, uh... I don't expect to find the limits of range with Walk Snell's system with this little airplane. And my pan throw is getting kind of weird, kind of jittery. It doesn't like the center wheel. This is actually an old uh, 180 degree pan servo that came from ready-made RC, if I remember right. Actually kind of getting some weird jittering in the airplane itself now. How does my wind speed and air speed? Air speed is actually quite low right now. Amps and everything look good. Voltage looks good. Just, I guess it's just kind of this crosswind, but I just don't want to get caught out out here and end up trying to fight a crosswind all the way back home. Um. I'm not going to cross the river today. That river that's coming up there, I don't intend to cross it. I just want to kind of maybe do four miles, which, if I'm not mistaken, may actually be my personal limit for this little plane. And then we'll go ahead and fly it back home. We're actually down to one megabit per second on the video. And yeah, you can see some compression in the video when we uh, pan the camera around a bit. So we'll go ahead and do four miles and turn around and go back. That'll be our... Uh, our goal for the day and we're actually losing video now kind of in and out or are we gonna make four miles it's gonna be kind of sketchy well not really that sketchy we actually lost OSD and there's four miles 
So yeah, the OSD data is kind of in and out and video is a little in and out there. So notice my OSD is updating kind of slow and video as well. So I'm going to point the airplane back towards home right here. And I'm actually going to go to return to launch. Return to launch. So it should let the airplane just kind of steer itself back home. And it's going to do so in a manner that will land it at 200 feet of altitude once it makes it back to my rally point, which is just south of home. So it will slowly descend along its path back home. That's totally normal and expected. Uh, but everything looks good, feels good. To be honest, I expected a little bit better performance maybe at four miles from North Snail. But then again, we are running the lower gain triple feed patches. We're not running the high gain or the, these are actually, yeah, these are triple feed patch antennas, but they're not the triple feed patch array, which is the larger if I remember right, they're like 14 dB or something like that. Um, these are only like eight or nine. I'm gonna show you my mission planner screen real quick. Let's take a look at that. That's the river we just turned around at. I actually did pick up telemetry along the way there. We lost telemetry right along uh, this point along the woods and then we regained it out there. And it's actually catching little blips of telemetry along the way, on the way back, because it keeps uh, auto panning back to there. Or actually, it's just panning back to its last known location. It was actually, all the, we're all the way back to that bridge, which is right there at the center of the screen right now. That's where the airplane is right now. If we look back on that screen, you can see there's the bridge right down there. So yeah, we still haven't recovered telemetry, but we did have it for a moment out there by the river. And in fact, if I put you back on Mission Planner, we've actually recovered it there once again. So we're catching a little blimps of blips of telemetry along the way. Um, which is pretty good. This is standard uh, cross-air receiver. This is not the high output. This is just a standard uh, single antenna crossfire receiver. I forget what they're called. A little small one. But everything looks good, feels good. I keep saying that, I'm just kind of reassuring myself. But pretty confident in the airplane's ability to fly itself back home. Pretty happy that we went four miles with it. And like I said, if I'm not mistaken, that might be a record for this little airplane for as far as mine anyway. Hopefully, obviously, uh, others have flown the little Sky Eagle quite a bit farther than that. With some nice efficient setups and bigger batteries and all. That... Jittery pans for voting always me though. If I kind of stop it between two points where it wants to settle, it'll kind of jitter between them. But it's it's acceptable for now. That may be something I change in the future, but for now it's fine. Um. So speaking of props, I see the prop back there kind of shimmering in the sun. That reminds me, I did order some more props. I ordered an assortment of five inch and six inch propellers. I think I only ordered a six by three gym fan, then a few different five inch props with between like four and 4.5. I think there might be one five inch pitch. I'll play around with some of those and see if we can't pick up even slightly more efficiency than we have already. Because um, the propeller that I'm running right now is a five by 4.5 dowel prop, but it's a bull nose prop. And I believe that's why it's as loud as it is. And that being loud to me is a sign of being inefficient. I think it could be more efficient with a better, better propeller, quieter prop that made more thrust and less noise. Um, so that's going to be a goal that we shoot for at some point in the future. Maybe try to pick up a little bit more efficiency. Um, but for now, I'm pretty happy with it. Everything's working good. Walk snail seems to be pretty good. We may push out for more range than that. And we may try to do more than four miles with higher gain antenna on the receiver at some point. But to be honest, I do like these antennas that I have on it right now. Because they do allow me to, uh, to kind of wander around a bit. Because they're lower gain, they have a wider 
beam, I guess would be the right name for it, the, a wider area of reception, instead of a narrow cone like you would have with a higher gain antenna. And that's why I went with these first. It's kind of something I wanted to, to work with and try to keep that on there. And uh, if I can, I'll stick with those. If not, then I'll replace them with uh, better antennas in the future. Um, another thing I wanted to point out, I just realized I didn't plug in my external battery for uh, the uh, Crossfire uh, module. So we're running the Crossfire on 500 milliwatts right now. And it, well, it's actually sitting at, at bouncing around 100 or it's kind of up and down, settling right around 100 milliwatts or so right now. Um, but all that trip all the way out to the river there to four miles, that was on 500 milliwatts. And we are flying from inside the shed with a little wimpy antenna that's buried in the leading edge of the rudder back there. We don't have the uh, Immortal T. We just have the basic little small wire whip antenna. So I'm pretty happy with uh, Crossfire's performance too. Doesn't seem like Waxnail steps on that at all. GPS seems good. I do know the num realize anyway, I've noticed the numbers tend to drop out sometimes as far as satellite count, but I haven't noticed a performance issue as far as how well the accuracy is and everything. So I'm not going to bother with trying to improve that or anything. It seems to be working fine. So kind of don't fix it if it's not broken approach. But I was actually going to fly up the bayou on the way back. I was going to kind of detour over that way and fly up the bayou. But we're going to go ahead and let it fly all the way back home. We'll let it finish this return to home initiative that it's on right now. And, uh, I just want to see if it actually hits 200 feet when it gets there because it does seem like it's a little bit high to me right now. You know, we're almost on top of that rally point and it's going to uh, be a little high when it gets there, but I guess it will eventually descend down to 200. I may actually have that rally point set for 300. I honestly don't remember. I was wondering if it was going to turn before it got back home because my rally point is out over the field south of home uh, but it does seem like it's going to lighter more directly overhead where it armed rather than rally point to be honest I'm not even sure I have the rally point set in this airplane I must not I probably have it set to return home and I don't have a rally point set and if that's the case that's probably why it Went back to 300 rather than 200, which is usually what I set for my RTH altitude anyway. So I guess I don't have my rally point set up in this one. It's, I'll need to make a mental note of that to correct it later. I'll probably forget, so it'll probably do the same thing in my next video. But anyway, it, it returned back to where it armed and reached its 300 foot altitude when it got there. So now we've only used 1200 milliamp hours from the battery. It's a 3500 uh, 4S 3P, a 4S 1P rather, lithium ion, 18650 pack. So we will go once we get kind of lined up with the Bayou here. I'm going to switch back to fly by wire. Fly by wire A. And I'm going to. Lose a bit of altitude and get down, and we'll make a run up the bayou and come back before we land. Kind of get the best of both worlds. We'll get down, let's call it about 150 or so. We'll go to cruise. <laughs> 160 will do just fine for cruise altitude and we'll just make a little run up the bayou here and probably up to the bridge we'll turn around we'll fly back up the bayou and then we'll come back and land and call it a day um on the last video that i flew up the bayou on the 30 minutes of walks now video i called this hyacinth or uh, hibiscus it's actually hyacinth i get those mixed up the names but that's what's all this growth in the bayou is taking over. It's it's an invasive 
hyacinth water plant that kind of grows and floats in the water and moves around and up and down the bayou with the wind and it's just kind of an annoyance makes it almost impossible to run a, an outboard motor in there and it's actually a lot more open water up this way than there usually is it's pretty well covered most of the time out here which is not good for the fishing at all you know beyond just the inconvenience trying to uh, get a boat up and down there and even in and out of the water it actually uh, it's not good for the fish but it's it's really not as bad right now as it has been but I do fully expect it to be an issue once the summer months come back in fact I remember thinking on my last flight up here this uh, little floating dock down here by the, these people's camp here was pretty well surrounded by the stuff and I, I noticed it's pretty well cleared out away from there now so it definitely does seem to be improving you can see we do have a lot of it kind of getting caught up around the bridge pylons there too and obviously down towards our house it's still pretty thick all out across the bayou There's something white down there on the side of the road don't know what that is But yeah, as far as walk snow goes, I'm really happy with the performance of it. Um, range is as good as I had hoped. Um, I kind of expected it to may maybe do more than four miles without dropping out like it did today. That seemed to be pretty close to the limit of what it can do. But I kind of expected to get more than that with the good antennas. And I'm sure we will with higher gain antennas on the receiver, but I was really hoping to not have to go to those higher gain antennas to get a good, decent performance out of it. You see, we're actually making a lot better time now with the wind pushing us back. Showing like a 9 mile an hour tailwind, 8.9. Nice sunset back there in the background. A little glare off the nose of the plane. But yeah, as far as image quality and everything, the way it feels and I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with Walksnail, and this will absolutely stay in this little airplane, and it will absolutely find its way into at least one more, because I do have another uh, transmitter unit and camera waiting to go into something. I was kind of thinking I might put them in the AR Pro so that I could kind of stretch it out a little bit and find a range, but after the 4-mile test that I just did today, I kind of don't think I need the AR to find the limits, at least in my environment here. I know some people have flown it quite a bit farther, but um, I have several other airplanes that we can put it into that will happily fly within that four or five mile an hour, or mile range with no issues. So yeah, I guess we're gonna fly back home here and we'll circle around and uh, set up a landing here shortly before we do I want to check out sounds like a car on the highway side there it is I see it car passing over there it's nice to be able to see things like that without you know wondering is that really a car it's a little white white blob I can actually see detail it's really nice but yeah there's all that that hyacinth that I was talking about there's a big patch of it that stays in front of our house here and then down this way is pretty much all choked up so um, a nice sunset out there and uh, that'll probably be the end of the flight now we've only used like half the battery less than half the battery rather but we've been in the air for 25 minutes um, so I'm just gonna kind of venture out here and we're gonna land uh, I guess we need to land Probably this direction that we're going right now to have a little bit of a nose wind rather than a little bit of a tailwind, mostly crosswind, and then it's going to be rolling over that tree line so it won't be real pleasant anyway. But we'll kind of split the difference and take the best approach. So we're going to fly out here and we're going to set up an approach down the runway from out here from this direction. And I guess we'll take the time to thank you all for watching the video. And 
actually here in a helicopter right now, so I probably need to get down on the ground pretty quickly anyway. Fly by wire A. So we'll go ahead and lose some altitude, push the nose down, make sure we're doing our part to stay safe. So we're at 40 feet below the tree, so if any helicopters make their way into my flight path, then that's on them and not me. Morally speaking, anyway. Probably not legally. But I would like to thank you all for watching the video. Any questions, comments, drop them in the comment section below the video, and I'll try to answer them to the best of my abilities as soon as I can. And if I miss anyone, just let me know, and I'll get to it. And, uh, of course, to all the Patreon pledges and YouTube channel members that make this all financially possible for me. So go ahead and cut power and nice smooth landing. Now I want to kind of look around and see if I can spot that helicopter. I can still hear him in the area. He's not really close. He's pretty far away. But if he's close enough to hear him, he's close enough for me to be concerned about him. And I can't spot him anywhere. So, uh, I guess it's a non-issue. So let's go ahead and go back to manual mode. We'll disarm. Disarmed. And should drop us back into standby mode. There we go. So we'll go ahead and stop this recording in the video, and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching this one.